800-222-5222. It's Midday Live. Milo Enopolis in the studio with us. Go out to calls. Ryoga, go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? Gotcha. Awesome. Uh, hey, Dr. Drew. Uh, hey, Milo. Thank you so much for taking my Hi. call. Uh, so I was at your event in Berkeley. Uh, in fact, you gave me my tickets. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, oh, you're welcome. I didn't get a chance to, you're welcome. Yes, I didn't get a chance to go, actually, because of the violence that took place. I'm sorry. And, and you know, I had the most wonderful outfit planned. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> it was beautiful. I'm so sorry you didn't get I know, to see I would have loved to see it. <laughs> so oh boy. following that event, uh, you know, and the police did very little. So there was an event, I believe, the 15th after that, where, mm-hmm. once again, the police did very little. And there was mm-hmm. a horrific act of violence. And then I was up to the fifth and then the 15th. Mm-hmm. Now, there was the Ann Coulter event that didn't go on where the police actually got their act together and was fairly peaceful. And then we had the event in uh, Portland uh, co- last week yeah. where, again, the police actually did their job. So yes. I know you're returning to Berkeley soon. I am. I'm curious how you feel about how now that police officers and you know, there's all these free speech events and counter protests throughout the country. Now that police kind of have a code to go by. Do you feel that your next event will be a bit more peaceful? Um, And do you feel that you have sort of started this whole free speech movement? Because I didn't care very much until I took an interest in you at the beginning of the year. And now I feel as as my obligation to go to these events uh, to uh, exist on the side of free speech and in common sense. And also, when are you returning back to Berkeley? Uh, well, thank you for that. Um, you're not alone. Many people feel as you do. And lots of the people who were attacked by Antifa, by the, these violent leftist thugs in UC Berkeley, were not fans of mine. They just wanted to hear what I had to say. They just wanted to show up and listen to somebody that they'd heard, you know, interesting things about. Um, and, and, you know, there's, there, there was one of, the, one of the, the, the really big positive changes that I think that I, I am making to... Uh, America, um, I'm happy that I'm really happy about is this UC Davis, UW Seattle, and UC Berkeley. The police were instructed basically to stand down and let people, you know, let 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 these uh, armed, pre-planned, well-funded, well-organized, violent leftist gangs of thug uh, smash stuff up. Um, and they were they were you know they were basically told to do that. Now at UC Berkeley, there were people there who weren't necessarily Milo fans. But they were just there to just to hear what the guy you know hear what the guy had to say, which is what they all told uh, you know reporters, and they were being pepper sprayed in the face. A hundred thousand dollars worth of damage was done to UC Berkeley itself, and five hundred thousand dollars worth of damage was done to downtown Berkeley, which never gets reported on. Um, that's because universities, the local mayoralties, and police forces work together to de- to determine the, the police approach to these events. And from the university's point of view, what they want to do is to discourage conservative speakers from coming by making it as terrifying and as expensive as possible. Well, the problem is that that is in direct violation of their legal obligation to provide a safe platform for speakers, regardless of political persuasion. UC Berkeley receives, I think it's $360 million annually in federal funding, and they are required by law uh, to be politically agnostic when it comes to providing spaces for speakers when students want to hear them. I think what happened with me, um, you know, at the last tour... I'm going to ask you to hold what happened until we get across this break. I'm out of time. It's Talk Radio, 790 KBC. That's us, Midday Live. Dr. Mike Catherine is Talk Radio 790 KBC. The number is 800-222-5222. And our guest is Milo Ianopoulos. Milo, again, we appreciate you being here with us. Well, thank you so much. Being open, honest, and uh, thorough in your uh, sort of, um, you know, openness with our uh, with our callers. And you were talking about, a, you were trying to tell me a story before we had to go out to commercial break about what had happened to you on your tour. I believe you met your college tour. Yes, um, and I've forgotten what the story was. You've forgotten it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let me what ask we, you a quick question. What before, we, no, what we, no, no, Berkeley it was a, it was a good call, one. What was what we can talk you, about? You're talking about how people... In the oh, no, sound. I remember. No, I was talking about how I was saving America. I remember now. Yes. Um, I just, <laughs> 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 no, what I, um, the, the police chiefs, um, and, and I, I, I have no reason to suppose that there's any uh, anything, th- any, any causal connection um, uh, or any any reason why why this this might be so, but uh, the police chiefs at UC Davis, UW Seattle, and UC Berkeley at the time when the police were were told to stay away and just let the protesters go wild were were all female police chiefs, um, and they were all um, very closely associated with 
the university administrators. And I'm guessing what happened is some kind of sisterhood thing where it's like, let's just make it as impossible as we can for this guy uh, who, who, who hates feminism and all the rest of it. Um, but ordinary people got hurt. And what I've noticed since, um, and I, I guess I was the—I I am the crucible in which these these little explosions start. And now there's this huge, you know, a brush fire has turned into a a, a, a galactic conflagration, um, you know, between these 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 um, groups of agitators uh, on both on both sides, really. But what I have noticed since is that the policing strategies have changed, and that's a very positive development because what it means is universities are realizing that they have to uphold their commitment to um, allow anyone to speak that if students want them to speak. Now, I'm not what, you know, it, it's obvious within, you know, having spent, sent a second in my company that I'm not most, uh, I'm not what any of the, the names the media calls me, right? But even if I were, even if I were, um, what's the guy's name? Richard Spencer, you know, the white supremacist yeah. guy, right? Even if I were him, they're still obliged to provide him a platform if students want to hear from him. Now, as it happens, I'm just a sassy gay guy who likes to crack black, jo uh, black uh, whatever jokes and, 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 and fat jokes and, and talk, um, you know, and talk about, about how I don't like the progressive left. But, but it, the, such is the fury from the left because they've never really seen anyone like me before who's, who's fearless and who's actually prepared to park, park my pink tanks on their lawn and beat them where they live. Has anything you've said ever created hate, do you think? Has it generated actual behavior? Or, and let me sort of... No, it's put, the put, opposite. Hold well, on a second. And parenthetically, oh, along those same lines, do you mm -hmm. have you ever said anything you regretted? Uh, well, yeah, so, so I'll do it in two parts. Has anything I've ever said created hate? I think the opposite. You know, the reason the left hates laughter because it because it can't control it. You know, you can't authoritarians hate laughter because you can't control what people what people laugh at, what they find funny. The reason the left likes to clamp down on jokes, and and this is why you get Seinfeld, Chris Rock, all the rest of it saying they won't play college campuses because the kids are too sensitive these days. Um, the reason they want to clamp down on jokes is they they want to um, suggest that that words can be harmful, can be hurtful. When, you know, like telling jokes about black people, jokes about, they're, they're all the best jokes. And people who's like Sarah Silverman, you know, they used to be funny before they contracted feminism and became, you know, you know, became awful. I'm one of the only people, I think, in American public life who is unafraid to tell jokes about anyone and anything. And what the left misunderstands about humor is that it brings people together. It doesn't drive them apart. What are pickup lines? They're jokes designed to ease people into communication with into into um, uh, into into co into conversational congress with one another. Humor binds us; it doesn't drive us apart. And by constantly calling people sexist and racist and homophobic and transphobic for cracking jokes, you are achieving nothing but driving people apart. And as for have I ever said anything I regretted? Well, I think uh, probably many of your listeners will remember in February. Um, I had a little professional hiccup um, when a tape surfaced of me saying things that I, I did not mean. Um, so I, I, in my youth, was a victim of something very unpleasant. And I, and I figured that gave me the right to crack jokes about it because hu humor is, you know, is, is how I... I this, this is sexual through. abuse comments? Right. And humor is how I get through, you know... Um, I think humor is how many of us get through all the terrible things in life. You so know? you're adjusting um, those those so, things. So I was I was addressing those things in in a lighthearted and flippant way on a four hour three a.m. live stream. Very you know one of those booze fueled chat fests where things you, you regret uh, saying that. ideas tumble out of your mouth half formed. Okay. And mm -hmm. I said and I and I made one remark that I I I did not mean. And I regret it, and I apologize. And I apologize for that. It's the only apology I ever intend to make in my entire career, because it's the only time I think I've ever been wrong. Um, but, but, but you know, but for sure. And I'm, but I'm, I'm humble enough to acknowledge when I think I have misspoken or acted wrongly. I just don't do it that often. You said earlier that you were oblivious to maybe negative feedback or or the way that certain people, certain tropes would behave. Mm. But I, I, you clearly have very thick skin, and you're willing to be courageous, at least intellectually. But does, as a person, does it ever really hurt your feelings to go home and see the negative tweets, the negative write-ups, the blogs, whatever? I mean, I, it has to get at you somewhat, right? I mean, maybe once every millennia, or I might, I might wake <laughs> up in a, you know, in a bad mood and and just be, you know, and just see. You know, one of the things I guess that makes me upset is, you know. I, I have a, I have, uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, I have love in my life. Is a, is a, you know, is a, it's a, 
he's uh, he's black and 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 um, you know when when people on the internet are calling me you know a white supremacist and a Nazi and all the rest of it, I look sure. I, I look over at the love of my life and it and I just think my, you know it it, it so, every once in a while it gets to you and you just think if only they knew. Um, and, and because I'm not the kind of person that wants to cynically abuse their pr private relationship for professional reasons, it's not like I can kind of, I'm not just going to post a picture of a couple of, a couple of us and, and, you know, and, and expose him to, to danger and to whatever. Um, so sometimes I just have to suck that stuff up and, and, and I can't respond, you know, for his sake, you know, I, I, once in a while, I guess, but to be perfectly honest with you, I really don't care um, that much about mean words from from people who don't take the time to actually listen to me. Because my experience is that the people who hate me, the people who are probably um, complaining right now to you for daring to have me on the show and, and have probably been complaining for yeah. some time and will continue to complain afterwards, I doubt whether many of those people have actually ever read any of my columns. I doubt when, whether many of those people have actually watched my college talks because if they had... I think they would appreciate the same level of nuance and intelligence that I hope that I've exhibited in this interview. That is um, the stuff that drives me insane, which is which is what I was talking about with the trust, trust me, I'm lying. They, they believe the rhetoric right. of the response, and then the response gets reported as fact, as opposed to going to the primary and, sort of. But I got to go to. I got so many calls for you, Milo. I want to get to some of, <laughs> of them. Dennis, go no, ahead. We must. We must. Dennis, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Milo. Hi. Um, before I get to my point, uh, uh, just a very quick quote attributable to, to Winston Churchill. Mm. If, if you're, you're young and you're not a liberal, mm. you have no heart. And if you're older and you're not a conservative, you have no mind. Well, I guess I was born age 90. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went, no, I mean, I, th I, think, um, I think there's some, tr uh, there's, uh, there's, there's clearly from the life trajectory of people some truth to that because people begin with very idealized uh, notions about, you know, peace, love and understanding and being wonderful to each other. And then they have mortgages to pay and kids to raise. And this is the problem I have with libertarianism is, you know, like libertarianism sounds fine in principle, but in practice, I don't want my daughter to be a stripper. So it might be quite nice to disincentivize that uh, you know, <laughs> in some way. Um, so I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think I'm, I don't think I, I don't think I followed the conventional political trajectory that many people do. All I want to do is, is um, in my college talks, make it okay for other people who have unconventional paths through their political discovery and, and development, um, able to express themselves on campuses. And currently college, uh, college Republicans, um, you know, uh, uh, YAL and YAF and, and all these other organizations on campus who, who, who represent the, you know, the, the, the growing, timid, but increasingly uh, confident conservative minorities, you know, on, on campuses. I want them to be able to speak their own truths and, and, and express their own opinions as fearlessly and as um, and 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 as and, and and with as much pride and as much enthusiasm and as much excitement uh, and as much spectacle as people with left wing opinions can, and that's really my that's really my only goal. And, and let me let me throw the libertarian point of view into the into the mix here and defend their <laughs> position, which is there are other ways to disincent disincentivize pro certain kinds of behaviors without the government doing it. Just saying, Mel, go ahead. Oh, hey, hi, Milo, hi, Mike, how are you hi, doing? What up, Doctor Drew? Hey. Um, yeah, Milo, I just want to get your opinion on something. I was really disappointed this year. Christopher Street West decided to make the Gay Pride Parade a big resist protest march. Mm. And, yeah, they publicized it. And I thought, oh, well, you know, maybe it's mixed with all the, you know, the joy of a parade. I go walk up the street on the Santa Monica Boulevard. Mm -hmm. The streets were empty. Mm -hmm. This usually invites families to engage them and, mm. you know, mm -hmm. um, all things about, you know, gay people, whether, you know, extreme or not, whatever. Anyway, I was extremely disappointed. It, it totally got hijacked. Maxine Pelosi and Adam Schiff were there speaking, mm. and it was just so mean-spirited, and I think it just yeah. sucked the joy out of it all. There's an ugliness about it, your, your um, opinion. Yeah, Thanks a lot, well, guys. Love you, Milo. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, well, listen, uh, you know, I think that gay sh the gay I guess I'm about to say gay shame, uh, gay pride, <laughs> rather, well, they're, they're, they're indistinguishable, um, you know, uh, if, if you actually look at the parades these days. Um, gay pride is, is, um, is an anachronism. I don't think it performs much of a function any longer. I don't think there's any reason for it, really. It's a very corporatized, you know, vodka and lube-sponsored 
um, you know, way for people to to waste their weekend, you know, getting getting high and and getting off with each other. I don't think it really accomplishes anything in in a civil rights sense. But this is this is a wider point. Intersectionality, which is um, the one of these words that the left has come up with um, to describe the fact that some people's lives are, are terrible for multiple reasons. Um, you know, has is 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 a sort of buzzword, and you'll sometimes hear it. What it basically means is that these protest groups, whether it is feminism or the LGBT movement or Black Lives Matter, or whatever, they've basically run out of stuff to complain about. So they're all teaming up, and they're all they all now show up to the same stuff together to protest the sort of nebulous. Uh, artificial constructs of patriarchy, white supremacy, capitalism, all of these, you know, they don't actually have very much to say anymore. And I think that, get, that, that you know, gay pride, there's no reason why gay pride should, gay pride should be particularly political, um, especially when, you know, I mean... Uh, it's I think, history, but you're back to, you know, talking well, about well, history, of, of course. Of, co- of course, but times have moved on and you I, can't well, stay in you, history forever. Oh, you, you were the one that a half an hour ago said, if you, you know, don't study your history. No, but, no, but I'm, what, I, what I was talking about was was the left hijacking the gay, the gay rights movement, okay? Okay. Because what I'm saying is, you know, times have moved on from from the... Perf- and it's perfectly, perfectly reasonable, I would have agreed with you, you know, 50 years ago that the Republicans were the problem, right? That the cons- conservatives were the problem, for yeah. sure. But they're not anymore. The problem isn't really Democrats or Republicans because people don't care if you're gay what these is the days. Problem? It's quite hard to go out onto the street and find somebody who really, really, really cares about this stuff. The problem is Islam. The problem is radical Islam. And there is only one side of the political divide that is prepared to speak openly and honestly about it. And it's not even all of them. Not even all Republicans. Paul Ryan won't do it. Um, it's Trump and it is some of the Trump... Uh, you know, supporting media. It is me, and it is you know, it is a small faction of this new, um, you know, trolly, mischievous, dissident, populist, nationalist right who will who 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 just we we just find it mind boggling that the left, on the one hand, will speak about you know tolerance and inclusion and fairness and all the rest of it, and on the and on the other hand, support a candidate. Who's funded by 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 a country that wants to wants to see us, uh, you know, hurled off roofs and, and goodness what else, um, you know, there's there's so much hypocrisy and so much of the of the gay community being taken for granted by the left, and it just makes me despair for my fellow homosexuals when they see things like the Orlando nightclub massacre happen, and they still don't get the message. And you see this peace, love, understanding. I mean, the Ariana Grande concert, for instance, happened in, in my home country, in Manchester. And I challenged her on uh, Facebook to condemn radical Islam. And I don't want to make any anti-Muslim statements. It's not, it's not about getting at anybody in particular. But say, you know, radical Islamic terror is a, is a you know, I, I, I said to her, I said to her in a number of statements that were very widely reported, um, you must condemn this ideology. This is a moment for culture, which is so much more powerful than politics, for a pop star to condemn a movement which is sucking in new converts. I mean, Britain, the UK, Manchester, where this stuff happened. You know, the UK sends more fighters to ISIS than any country except Belgium, where they also have a, uh, an Islamic problem. Ariana Grande making a statement about the evils of, of, of radical Islamic terror could save you know could save millions of lives, but she won't do it, and she won't do it because the the left continually panders to the worst forms of Islam, and 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 to see the gay community time and time and time again um, drop back on you know fall back onto this love wins, let's change our Twitter avatars to rainbow flags, let's all just blah blah blah. The let's re- get the you re- kicked off Twitter. Yeah, get Milo Nobles kicked off Twitter. The real enemy is that orange clown in the in in the White House. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, but 50 people were killed in that nightclub in, in Orlando at the Pulse nightclub. And one gay guy showed up to point the finger at who was really responsible, and it was me. And I went down there and I gave a speech um, and I said, look, you've got to stop listening to these people who are lying to you. You've got to start naming the problem and you've got to start protecting 
uh, your own and, and the gay people have got to start waking up. And I, I, that, that speech has been viewed, I, I think, across various platforms in various ways about 10 million times now. And, and I would like to think that it had a big, a big impact on, on the way that the election went. And I, my belief is that the stranglehold that, that progressives have had up until now on many of these minorities, whether it's, uh, well, I say minorities, women too, you know, women, blacks, gays, it's my hope that one of the effects of the Donald Trump presidency, which has basically blown apart any sensible definition of Republican, Democrat, left, right, nobody knows, nobody has any idea what any of these words mean anymore. Um, perhaps one of the effects of that is that people will start voting with reason, logic, and fact instead of tribally. And will start actually listening to, uh, actually start voting with their heads instead of with their body parts and their skin color. That's my dream for America. America was founded on ideals. It was Amer America was found, you know, was founded not, you know, on the basis of skin color, sexuality, and gender, but America was founded, you know, on freedom, on the idea that you should be able to do, be, and say anything. And from my point of view, as a, as a free speech activist, the greatest threat to that in America today is the progressive left. And that is where you see, you know, this, they, they are the ones responsible for the hijacking of gay pride. Uh, they are the ones responsible for, you know, the papering over of, of who is responsible for, for terrorist atrocities. They are the ones responsible for all manner of things that make us less safe and that drive us further apart. We got to wrap this up, my friend. I appreciate you spending time with us. I'm just going to add one sort of uh, aphorism to your uh, little disclaimer there, which is wouldn't you also agree the level playing field, though, is also a, a, an important feature of the American idea. I wish there was one. You know, I not wish equal in all respects, but equal opportunity well, I under well, I the believe, law. I believe in equal oppo e equality of opportunity, not yeah. equality of outcome. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and that's why yeah. I don't have a problem with, you know, so, so the, just, just to give you a very, very fast, quick example. Very fast, because um, I can break and come back to you if you want to hang. Fine, let's do that. All right, so break, talk radio, 790 KBC.